Gary Simon of designcourse.com and this is the review of design challenge number 17 design a custom letter D in calligraphy all right so it is the new year January 1st 2015 and last year I set out a goal to record a video every day of 2014 didn't quite stick to that I think I got up to June 17th but anyhow I think I did about around 210 videos so that's pretty good I'm still continue uh, planning on basically uh, just recording a video or two every week and some other new things are in the pipeline as well. All right, so I just real quickly, uh, again, design a letter D in calligraphy, must be uppercased. Uh, I know the letters, you guys pretty much follow this, uh, although a couple of you didn't do the full whole white space thing, but no big deal. And some quick examples, and let's get started. All right, so a Dylan 12, I would say for the purposes of this challenge, uh, you know, this is a very simplistic version of you know what we're asking for. So there's nothing wrong with that per se. I uh, but there's not really too much here for me to critique. And just saying that you know it's very simplistic and it's not entirely bad, but it's so simplistic that there's not much I could say. So uh, thanks for that. And here we have another one. Uh, this one is. Very interesting. I like the execution completely, but when you think of calligraphy and handwritten calligraphy, this kind of veers away from that kind of organic style. Uh, it's, everything's a little bit more rigid, uh, but nonetheless, I really like the execution of it. And coming down here, um, let's see. So this one, uh, first hand drawn and then converted here. Uh, overall, I like this. It has a lot of potential. I would say that uh, the things that stuck out at me at first are, you know, this little one, one pixel um, white space or border or stroke between this portion and this little ribbon. Uh, that kind of looks bad at this resolution, at least, uh, because uh, you can see some pixelation in there. So I would add a little bit more space or, or whiteness so it doesn't look like that. Uh, over here, it's not so bad. I, but over here, you can definitely notice that. Um, but other than that, I, I think this is uh, something that's definitely something that you can work with. Uh, it, it's always a good idea to, to, to do everything in black and white and not try to do uh, different variations uh, simply because as a font, uh, you can't do that, obviously. So uh, other than that, thanks for the submission. Uh, here's another one. Uh, so the issue with this that I saw immediately was uh, it could be – it could look like kind of like a B, simply because this tail coming up here, the proportion are, is so off. So I would really address that because this does look like a big B in a sense, or a lowercase B. And I I would just bring this down a lot more, try to you know work the same concept, but try to keep the proportions a little bit better. So thanks for the entry. Galaxy X85, I would say get rid of the gradient right away. And also you have some color in here and the gradients as well. That's just uh, you know extra stuff that just you just don't need when we're trying to focus purely on the letter form. Uh, with that said, though, looking at the letter form itself, I would say this kind of tail it doesn't seem to be very very organic in terms of this bezier curve. Uh, it kind of just is a little bit rigid, and I know that's hard to to achieve sometimes, uh, but it's something you have to work on. Um, and up here, uh, this back portion of the D, uh, the little lines going across, you know, everything else feels kind of organic, but then you have these rigid lines going straight through, and it kind of just adds uh, for inconsistency in the design. But thanks for the entry now. Uh, over here, looking at this, this one's not too bad. I would say uh, there's some, I would like to probably or possibly thicken it up a tad bit, uh, like over here and here, because if that were scaled down, you'd want to, you would almost lose that detail. Um, and I also say the other thing would be, you know, with this line flowing this way, uh, it seems like it flows, it, it goes up a little bit too high. I think to create consistency, we would cr take this line and kind of just start it right around here so it flows a little bit better. I mean, you don't have this big gap up here. But again, I overall execution, I like it, and good job. Uh, over here, this uh, several issues. You know, again, we're we're talking. I'm talking about things like uh, adding the inner shadow and the drop shadow. You know, try to avoid doing that uh, in almost every case, um, especially when it comes to logo design or you know type like this uh, challenge here. Uh, with that said, and just looking at the letter form itself, 
Uh, I'm not sure what the the in intent of these bars are, are like what exactly they mean. To me, I kind of get this idea of like a, a, a cityscape. So it kind of just doesn't flow right or it doesn't feel right to me uh, for this letter form. But thanks for the submission anyhow. Um, and then over here, Maz, we have uh, – this is one of the reasons I wanted – people to you know, use a 500 by 500 document and also scale the, the, the letter down a lot more than the 500 by 500. Otherwise, we can barely see it. Uh, with that said, though, I can do this. Let me see here. It's just so I can see a little bit better. With that said, you know, it's kind of like the first entry. You know, there's not too much for me to, to really critique about it because it's so simple. You know, it works. Uh, and, and yeah, and that's that. So... Again, thanks for the submission. This one, I this one's a little bit hard to tell. Like if I didn't know this was a D, it would be hard for me to tell that this is a D. This could be an O, or this could be not even a letter form, maybe like a nut or something. Uh, so it would help maybe to see it alongside other letters. But again, that wasn't the requirement. Uh, so I would try to maybe work this in so that it's a little bit more rigid, this edge. Uh, otherwise, it kind of looks like an O. Uh, other than that, I would probably like to see the stroke thickened up a little bit in certain areas. But thanks for the submission. And then over here, I uh, this I uh, kind of like a funner style I could see uh, for the D in terms of the letter form. But I would say all of these little circles are kind of throwing things off. And then you also have kind of an issue of like the consistency between you know the white space between the D and this line. You know, it gets real close here. You have edges just barely touching, which isn't a good thing. And then over here it's a little bit wider. So you know these are all tiny little details that really kind of make a difference uh, in the big picture. Uh, so I would probably get rid of the these little uh, circles and work on simplifying and trying to create consistency between the spacing between the various lines and the edges that you have going here. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the entry. And then Fritz, we have this D here. Again, the uh, it's a little bit hard to see when we have the, the gradients going on here and kind of clash. It's a little bit dark, kind of like the background. But just focusing on this one, I would say I... It's a little bit, it doesn't flow right to me just because we have this edge right here and it seems real rigid, but then the rest of the, the type is fluid uh, up until this point and, and other points. So I would just try to work on creating consistency. Um, so yeah, thanks for that entry. This one, I really wanted to see this like in a vector format because I could tell a lot of work went into it. And my child downstairs is like making weird animal noises. Hopefully that not, that's not coming over the uh, microphone. But yeah, you can tell a lot of very intricate work went into this. Uh, but yeah, I wish I could have seen it in a, in a vector format. But other other than that, I really like it. Uh, and very unique. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the submission. Over here, Ibram. This one, I uh, it almost seems kind of unfinished. You know, just because we have like this little stroke here and all these little line. Uh, texture effects it seems like uh, and the back of the D kind of comes in my opinion up a little bit too close to the to this portion um, but yeah it almost feels un in un incomplete essentially like I can't even talk uh, but thanks for the submission uh, designer over here now again we want to scale this down so we have white space between you know the documented edge but I'll just try to zoom out here so this seems a little bit amateur you know like you said this is my first post and i know my d is not looking good but okay so one of the reasons is is because you know, you're trying to create something that looks organic and flows well but this curve you can tell is i uh, it doesn't flow well at certain points for example we come around here i uh, and you come down here and then it stops and then it kind of comes up over here and then it hits an edge and then it comes up over here and it kind of hits an edge right here. And another big issue is, you know, you used a single path, it looks like, on this, and a single stroke, and a, a stroke width, which is, you know, uniform. So it doesn't matter what type of letter form you're, you're ever trying to design, but when you're, you have the, the same exact stroke width on it, it's going to make, it's, it's going to, be very hard to make it look good. So I would just look at, you know, some examples of established calligraphy fonts just to get an idea of kind of what I'm talking about there. All right. 
Uh, so let me get back up to 100% here. This one's really cool. Uh, the D in and of itself, if we, if we were just to take out all the detail inside of it, it was, it's a pretty good form to begin with. And then all the uh, detail inside of it I like as well. So I really can't say anything too negative about this. So thanks for the submission. And then we have another one here. Uh, I would say, yeah, in terms of trying to structure the D and make it readable, having this back edge here so close to this this curve makes it a tad bit hard to read. Um, I would maybe want to try to bring this up here just a tad bit more. You can still have this nice flowing arc, but uh, it almost looks a little bit hard to read. And I can also see that it's italicized. So, you know, with, with, with you know, a full font, it would probably look pretty good. I just think that's a minor little... Uh, comment that I made there and then the final one is right here I again I think this is actually pretty good and has a lot of potential I think the stroke is just a little bit too thin in some areas and also almost overall I uh, I like that you thickened it right here in this portion but over here everything's kind of really um, lacking in terms of stroke width so I think if we just took everything and increased the stroke width uh, using a variable width profile, perhaps in um, Illustrator, this would actually be um, a lot better than it is. But the basic form and shape that you have, I really like it. So it's a good entry. All right, so that is it. So look out for more videos here in 2015. Uh, make sure you subscribe here at a YouTube and check out designcourse.com. All right, goodbye.